Hi, so yes, uh, I'm going to be today talking about my project which has been on improving privacy awareness um, and using that as a vehicle for improving privacy engagement. And what I'm kind of, what I'm thinking about there is I so I, I've conducted I mean the, the assignment was was one interview, but I've conducted at least five at this point. I think more like seven if I count the two others that I did previously before this class. Um, and so what I'm really focused on is getting a sense of communication with different people and figure it's it's interesting because I, I have figured out that for a lot of people this subject of privacy can be a lot more personal than a lot of I at least initially expected because for me I've been relatively fortunate to not have any really significant uh, reasons to, to say you know this thing happened to me so here's why I care about privacy so much I haven't I haven't had that um, go on but I have um, so it's been really interesting because it, it comes down ultimately to values and I've, I've always thought this but I think that our work and this is something we've talked about in the class that our work is informed by our lives um, and so in that way we need to make it so that this meshes with it so I was thinking first of all um, you know the one of the core problems that we've talked about in terms of PIT and in terms of uh, co-design is what happens if people just don't seem to care how do you how do you create engagement when it's not there um, in the case of digital privacy it is creating awareness because a lot of people don't understand the risks that has to do with letting a say a Roomba is my personal punching bag for this project thanks to Jameson Wetmore um, take pictures of their houses and sell the data that comes out of that analysis to uh, other um, to other companies what what does that really mean for your quality of life um, and but in a lot of ways I think as well it's um, it comes down to how do I how do you create or or expose people to new values I think it, it comes down to engagement and it comes down to understanding emotional narratives so my first uh, concept was con to connect a lot of the same concepts that go into uh, role-playing games in order to apply the same sort of ludo narrative game design that causes people to become very invested without even realizing it in narratives surrounding these different creative spaces that people make purely for fun. Um, that's the, I know at least in my life I've focused a lot more on things on different projects if they're fun to do. Uh, so that's a helpful aspect as well. Um, so what I'm, I suppose what I'm getting to is ultimately that at some point I think, thank you Katina for talking with me about this, uh, I realized that it doesn't make sense to have a deliverable product necessarily in, in the sense that people would usually think of it for a project that ultimately is about creating ongoing narratives and creative spaces that will develop things that by definition you cannot imagine going into it because um, that's a core facet of the role-playing game design is you take different people you put them all into a into a good faith creative space and then they come out with a set of solutions or a set of creative ideas that you couldn't have thought of if it was just yourself and i suppose in many ways that's a case for co-design um so in that case i'm looking at communication and i'm looking at engagement with respect to digital privacy through really what comes down to what's at the heart of who people are and, and what privacy has to do with their lives. Um, in the, so in a lot of, I, rec I was actually, I, I had a chance to think about this last night um, a, a lot. Um, but it's that um, we talked about this concept of process as product, which is essentially that there I, I was thinking 
um, I had already had this idea earlier, but I was thinking that the the it doesn't make any sense to me that if we want to do really transcendent and I pick that word intentionally uh, creative work with ideation because I think that's where the biggest innovation space is is in ideas. I mean, we can continue to improve upon the microchip all we want, but I'll get off of my soapbox for that. Um, you can let me know when I'm getting short on time, too. Uh, and um, so in that way, process is product is the sense of, okay, our lives are sort of these fundamental cumulative journeys that have this element of serendipity and unpredictability to them. And so it makes sense to apply that to a framework for creating more emotional um, narratives. So that's what I've come to sort of bring, and I separated it into two stages. I separated it in practice into uh, a sort of larger broadcasting thing, which unfortunately I haven't uh, had to, the chance to have happen yet. That's through a podcast, and also through, um, hopefully through stakeholder engagement activities, sort of a um, larger scale, and maybe in person, maybe not. This whole internet thing's crazy. But um, the... Uh, and so the last thing that I did want to say with respect to this is I, I was thinking about last night, I was well, I was writing a paper on AI, so that helps, is I was thinking, okay, why, why do this? I mean, what does it really come down to? And I think that, um, because yes, privacy and control, it's important on a psychological scale for people. People care about having control over their lives. They don't want someone else to have it, which is hopefully why telling someone that somebody else has control over their lives will set off alarm bells. Um, but in the case of AI, I was thinking, okay, this is the first step to, um, and I don't want to get too much into this because this is my paper for the other classes I was writing last night, but uh, this is sort of a, a parting thought idea, which is that I don't think that we're ready as a society to be able to properly parent AI. Um, in the sense of we can't make responsible decisions about that, and a lot of that has to do with what sort of information uh, AI will have, and that all starts with privacy, because you shouldn't be you shouldn't be living your daily life afraid of technological systems and letting them walk all over you. Um, so I think that is really important in the long term but that's a larger uh, scope view. That's what I'm looking to. And I wanted to thank, um, I hope you don't mind crediting with me, uh, me with this, Jason, but it's really affected a lot of uh, the thinking I've been doing about this uh, with respect to the role-playing games aspects and creating those creative spaces and just work and life in general, which is this other sense of perspectives in terms of being a pit professional with uh, being an effective host um, who provides a creative and social space for people to work in, so I really appreciate that. Um, that's about all I have to say. If anyone has questions, I would really love to engage with them. Um, in this case, I suppose it's still, in a, in a sense, establishing a product. Um, if, you, if you look at um, the way that, you know, uh, I, I, I want to look at... Um, I, I do see role-playing games and co-design as having these significant similarities that make them kind of the same thing to answer the question in chat, is that you are creating creative spaces with consistent communication um, to make things happen that didn't, uh, you know, couldn't occur if you were working on a, on a solo team. So in that sense, I was thinking, okay, you know, there are frameworks you say, here's how we're going to set up the space, here's how it operate, operates. And in that sense, yes, that is a product. You can write down, you can create a deliverable and say, this is how it's going to work. I'm personally not there yet. Um, but in the long term, I think that if you, it is advantageous to the process and the overall, the overall mission of that idea developing thing to be able to say, to kill your darling and say, I throw out this framework, mm -hmm. this is something completely different now. And that's kind of what I was thinking about with talking uh, about what I was thinking about with AI, because that 
really, I mean, it, for me at first, it put things into a major context that I did not have uh, until 12 hours ago. Um, <laughs> which is, you know, it's it's a heck of a thing to say, but, it, it you know, if that completely transforms what it is and makes it a, to many people a different thing, that's not a problem with me. You know, if anyone took on uh, a project and took it places that I can't take it, because, again, that comes down to that communication co-design aspect then that would be that would be wonderful and that's what i kind of think of is is i don't i don't think that ideas in that sense are confined to one person so to speak